Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think we're really whited out or darked out there. Welcome back to another video in the 30 day video challenge. This is the Flop and Krabi channel, I'm Davis. And today, today a suggestion from one of the subscribers, right here, this subscriber, said, hey, myself and my kids like to fish some cement pilings from bridges, also some uh, cement seawalls. So I thought, well, let's do a video on that. So today I'm actually fishing some large cement pilings from this bridge here. Uh, same bridge I did the pan optics video on. And today I'm actually using some hand tied jigs from another subscriber, uh, Fishing Lake Country, Dennis from Fishing Lake Country. I will link his YouTube channel below. Just go to his YouTube channel, comment on one of his videos saying you wanna check these out. I'll link that below as well. This is a hand tied little hair jig here, pink, black and pink. And uh, still have the down imaging set up. Whoa, down imaging set up on that sonar. So that's what we're gonna use. That's what I'm gonna start off with here. Vertically jigging some cement pilings. Now, I don't know if this is gonna work. I have vertically jigged these with live minnows and some plastics before. Actually, the first time I tried to do some live minnows and bobbers, and here's what I will say. This is actually a current, or a river system. There's a dam that I fished uh, early, early springtime that way behind me here. And the current actually moves through and it comes around this pillar. So I've been catching crappie in the eddies behind the pillar. The problem today is the wind's from the wrong direction. Usually the wind comes from, comes from this way, today it's coming from this way. So. It's a little bit difficult to stay in the eddy or on the back side of these pillars on the downside of these currents, cast the jigs up into the current and let it get dragged, let it get uh, taken behind these pillars and that's usually where these fish bite. I'm just gonna throw it in the eddy today instead of, instead of for casting it into the current and letting it go through and acting like a flailing bait fish or something. Now with these hair jigs, you gotta give them some motion because you gotta make them look like bait fish. So I am gonna move it side to side. It's not gonna be a pure ver vertical jig. But all I'm gonna do is just barely bounce my rod. And for those of you who don't know, you don't really wanna do a whole lot of wrist action like this. The best way to control it is actually just grab your rod, put it against your forearm like this. And then all you're doing is just moving, you're locking your wrist and you're just barely making that, the tip of the rod just bounce. I'm using an eight foot rod right now. This is eight foot ACC crappie sticks rod. And a lot of times I'll use a 10 or 11 foot when I'm jigging these pillars, but I'm not sure if I need to cast today. That's why I tied on the eight foot rod. All right, I didn't like that down view. I couldn't, with the wind and the current, I couldn't quite get the jig in the view of the sonar. So we're gonna try the, the regular forward view pan optics. Man, that looks like a bunch of fish right there. Big school of fish right there on the bottom on the back side of this pillar. Oh, there he is, got him, got him. Oh, they're perch, oh. Thought they'd be crappie, but they're a little perch. Man, they're pale. This guy's really pale. Little perch, little guy, see ya. See ya, buddy. Well. Catch a bunch of those guys, and we'll, I, th I think that'd be pretty fun. There's a bunch of them down there, right by that pillar. I just dropped it straight to the bottom, raised it up probably two feet. A nice little hand-tied jig for a little bit of bait fish action. Don't even need live bait. Or a bunch of fish. Yeah, those are those are all fish. Oops, oops. Hold on, hold on. And they're just sitting in the backside of this eddy here. Just a bunch of them. I'm gonna run into this pillar. Probably a bunch of perch, but that's okay. 
Oh, there he is. Got him again. Oh, there's a crappie. Got him that time. Man, these fish are pale. And again, they're just sitting right in the backside of this pillar, right in that eddy. They don't want to. They don't want to fight the current to move. These fish are pale. And they're just they're just stacked up. Ideally, you'd be able to tie up a uh, a rope. You'd be able to tie a rope or something. But these pillars are so big. I see a lot of times with Richard Jean, he's, he fishes some, some bridges with some smaller pillars and he can just tie up, which is really nice. But these pillars are pretty darn big. I mean, they're easily, I don't know, eight foot around, maybe bigger. But I'm just dropping this straight to the bottom. They're just stacked up. Look at them all. Look at them all right there. They're just stacked up right in that eddy. That's crazy, but they're really low. They're only three, maybe four feet off the bottom at most. A lot of them are less than two feet off the bottom. Those might be perch, but they are really low in the water column. We got cold water. Water temp is 58 degrees. I know some of you, I just talked to somebody in the comment section that said uh, they were in either in Alabama or Louisiana. I don't remember now. So the temps were 90 during the day and 70 at night. And when I wake up in the morning, I'm lucky if it's above 40 right now. It's not even October yet. Just giving a little tap. And then this thing is such a light faller, the, the, this hair jig. And that's a good thing because these crappie, as this thing slowly falls down, they'll actually come underneath it and scoop it up. And I don't feel the hit. I just feel it as I'm lifting. It just it feels like dead weight. Both those fish, both the perch and the crappie felt like that. And I'm lowering it back down when I don't get a hit because I want it to drop close to the bottom. I feel like that's when they kind of hit it on that drop. These are tight-lipped fish. It's always fun when you can see them. You know they're down there. It's frustrating we can't get them to bite, but at least you know you're fishing in the right spot. And I don't just mean with pan optics. When you can see them on 2D sonar or your side view or down view or down, down imaging, side imaging, whatever you want to call it. It's always better to know that there's fish down there. It means you got a chance. Might tie on a different hair jig that he had. I don't know, maybe they're just so used to seeing this color now. Didn't have this thing on. Well, so far only two fish. I'm probably gonna have to wrap it up pretty soon. Sun's going down. And I got to get back and edit a video, so I'm going to give it about five more minutes here. All right, that's going to wrap it up for me on bridge pilings. I think the biggest key for right for this type of bridge piling setup is the current's moving this way, okay? And both those, both the perch and the crappie, and I saw a bunch of other fish were set up on the backside in that eddy right there behind that pillar. I think that's the biggest takeaway right now. I'm gonna be come back. I'm definitely be using more of those hair jigs. Thanks again, Dennis. Fishing Lake Country, I'm gonna link his YouTube channel below. And uh, if he provides an email or website, I'm gonna post that below as well. Otherwise, just comment on his videos if you wanna check out his hand tie jigs. And uh, Heath, I appreciate the suggestion of fishing some cement pillars right there. Oh, there we go. Trying to be a weatherman, there we go. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for me today. I will be back doing some more vertical jigging on these pillars, but, but make sure you like and share the video, and then comment below your favorite techniques for fishing bridges, whether it's wooden bridges or these cement bridges. I wanna hear from you below. Comment your favorite technique. Is it vertical jigging? Uh, do you just troll between the pillars? Do you cast some sort of search bait? Comment that below. And as always, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, be sure to click that bell. The bell is gonna notify you every time I post a video in the 30 day video challenge and going forward into October. Appreciate you watching as always. We'll see you.